From a devastating flash flood in India that knocked over this commuter train, and an insane video showing a river before and after a record-breaking flood in Pakistan, to an embankment failure in China where excavators were used to try and patch the leak, and a group of men who had no choice but to traverse the world's most dangerous road. Here are 10 ridiculous flash floods caught on camera. The Duberquar is a right bank tributary of the Indus River, a nearly 2,000 mile waterway stretching from the Tibetan Plateau to the Arabian Sea. At one point, the Duberquar flows through the district of Kohistan, Pakistan, which means land of mountains. What is usually a scenic Pakistani locale turned into a nightmare in just 48 hours. Torrential rain flooded the river, causing it to burst its banks. A statistical assistant for the Pakistani government stood atop a cliff to document the whole thing. Here's what the river looked like on a typical summer's day. And here's what it looked like a day later. Our statistical assistant Saeed Anwar was heartbroken to see this flood tearing through his homeland. He was safe on the cliff, but other people downstream weren't so lucky. Thousands of people lost their homes and businesses. The flood occurred after the river burst its banks, causing water to spill uncontrollably. The United Nations dubbed the crisis a monsoon on steroids, as parts of Pakistan saw between 500% and 750% more water than usual. Flooding wiped away millions of crops, claimed nearly 800,000 livestock, and affected over 33 million people. At one point, one-third of the entire country was underwater. Pantai Ramis is a quaint coastal town in eastern Malaysia known for its picturesque sandy beaches. One of those beaches was nearly lost when a mining company moved in and ravaged the land. They were more interested in tin than sunbathing. Mother Nature wasn't about to let that one slide. By October 21st of 1993, workers had abandoned the tin mine. They had dug too close to the ocean, putting immense strain on the retaining walls. A local reporter got a call from the mine's owner about an imminent collapse. He grabbed his camera and rushed to the scene as fast as he could. He was lucky enough to capture what some herald as the best landslide footage of all time. Oh, <laughs> It was the landslide that just kept sliding. Massive chunks kept breaking loose and falling into the abandoned mine. Ocean water poured over top and shot like cannons from the sides. Our reporter thought he had seen the worst, but Mother Nature was only getting started.
Tin mining has always been a major industry in Malaysia. By 1979, the country was producing 63,000 tons of tin each year, making up 31% of the global supply. Of course, tin doesn't just multiply underground. By the 1980s, production had slowed as new markets in Brazil emerged. Mine collapses like this didn't help either. Today, you can still see the scars from what's left of the Pantai Ramis tin mine on Google Earth. It's next door to where the new quarry exists today. The Nepali village of Timang sits about 8,200 feet above sea level in the Himalayan mountains. The only way in or out is via winding roads carved into the cliffside. Long ago, these trails were carved for mules and foot traders. They may be paved today, but that doesn't mean that they were built with cars and trucks in mind. One road in particular is called Besi Sahar Chame. It's known as one of the most dangerous roads in the world, if not the most dangerous road. During the rainy season, waterfalls cascade over the right side of the road, leaving it looking more like a river. But that doesn't stop some people from crossing it, especially when they're on their way to work. If you thought your morning drive was bad, be thankful you aren't these guys. Thankfully, the local government has the sense to close the road when it gets too dangerous. Landslides are a common occurrence, and blockages happen all the time. But it's not like you can take a quick detour around the roadblock. You're pretty much stuck there until crews arrive to clear it. Think about this video the next time you complain about your morning commute. China saw massive flooding in 2020, as if the pandemic wasn't bad enough. According to reports, extreme weather impacted over 14 million people across 26 provinces. Hundreds of thousands were displaced, and over 10,000 homes vanished in the water. Workers in Lujiang County, a community of 888,000 people in Anhui province, found themselves in a harrowing situation. They were working on the Lianhe section of the Shidashu River when flooding caused the embankment to collapse. Now trapped on either side, our workers tried to use their excavators to plug the gap and save themselves. Watch how easily the rapids carry their heavy machines away. You might think they were made of plastic and rubber. We're picking this video up after several attempts to plug the gap. When it first opened, it was only 10 feet wide, and they plugged it momentarily with three excavators. But the water kept coming and washed everything away. The gap got wider, trapping our workers on an island. Thankfully, everyone made it back to dry land in the end. It's unclear if they ever recovered the lost excavators.
The Sung Noen District in Nakhon Ratchasima Province, Thailand, is home to roughly 82,000 people. It's about 150 miles northeast of Bangkok, and its namesake comes from two tall hills overlooking a vast pond, the Sung and the Noen. Allegedly, this pond has never flooded, even though Thailand is among the wettest places on Earth. All that rainwater has to go somewhere. Apparently, it goes into the pipes below this noodle bar. They were in for a bad day at work when it burst outside their door. Employees were preparing to open when the pipe burst out of nowhere. You can see the moment the ground pulses upward and a dog takes off running. Workers scrambled as a torrent of water flooded the outside patio. What do you even do in this situation? There wasn't a mop bucket big enough to contain that mess. According to reports, the geyser outside grew over 16 feet high. Meanwhile, our workers were left in muddy water up to their knees. All they could do was wait for it all to drain away. Now began the arduous task of cleaning everything up. Outside, you can see where the pipe burst through the concrete. It was powerful enough to send giant rock slabs flying several feet from the explosion. Thankfully, nobody was standing in the way. It's unclear what caused the pipe to burst, or if the local government compensated the noodle bar for damage and lost business. But we can't imagine they were able to sell food anytime soon. There's no telling what was running through those pipes other than water. Lanzhou, China is the largest city in Gansu province. Its location on the Yellow River has always made it a critical trade hub. As the capital of Gansu, it's home to over 4.3 million people who rely on the heavy industry sector for work. Torrential rains fell upon the southeastern regions of Gansu province starting on July 7th of 2018. They didn't let up until later in the month when most of the area was underwater. The Yellow River overflowed causing water to race through busy city streets. There wasn't a car in sight that could stand up to Mother Nature's raw power. We can't imagine the paperwork Olympics you probably have to go through to get a new car after this. Sadly, insurance coverage isn't easy to find in China. Similar floods ravaged southern China in May of 2023. They caused roughly $5 billion in damages, but only $300 million was covered by insurance. In other words, only 6% of flood-related damages were insured. They're the second largest country and boast one of the strongest economies on Earth, yet China is grossly underinsured against natural disasters. If you lost your car in this or any other flood, you were likely up a creek without a paddle. Coachella, California is a small city in Riverside County. It's home to over 40,000 people and hosts the annual Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival every year. They're also known for highly unpredictable weather. It can be bone dry one minute and then flooding the next. On March 12th of 2020, two young men found themselves trapped in a freak flash flood. Their black SUV had gotten stuck on the median and water quickly overtook their car. They climbed onto the roof and screamed for help. Thankfully, a good Samaritan and his truck happened to be passing by. Swift water rescue going on by regular citizens here. These guys got stuck. Oh, it's freezing. I can't imagine how cold these guys are. God, it is cold. 
Go for it, go for it. All right. Oh, 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 get him across. Get him across. Go, go, go. You got it. We don't know who this capeless hero is, but he willingly risked his life to save two others. There's no telling how much longer they could have survived on top of their car. The water could have easily washed it away, taking them along for a dangerous ride. Flash floods have become a nuisance in the Coachella Valley, but residents have learned to live with them. After all, they make life in their normally dry oasis possible. Maybe these two will think twice before trying to drive in one next time. They owe this middle-aged hero and his truck winch more than they care to admit. Assam is the second largest state by land mass in northeastern India. It's also the largest by population, with over 31 million people split between 35 districts. The least populated of those districts is the Dima Hassau district, known for its many hills and the villages built into them. Unfortunately, those hills make everything flood-prone when the rain starts falling. In mid-May of 2022, torrential rain and landslides eroded the area near the town of Halflong. The damage seemed to concentrate on the railroad tracks and the commuter train that was stuck in the middle. Unfortunately, this was only the beginning. The weather department warned people that extremely heavy rains would continue for several days. All of Assam remained on red alert. According to reports, floods and landslides snapped the rail and road links beyond the station. These trains were trapped, with about 1,400 passengers split between them. Thankfully, they all got off and sought higher ground before the train flipped. Nearly all of Assam was impacted by the floods in some way. The train station fiasco was only one minor incident in a statewide catastrophe. Riau Province, Indonesia is home to about 6.6 .6 million people. It's situated on the eastern coast of Sumatra Island and is known for attracting river surfers from all over the world. That's because Riau experiences a rare phenomenon called Bono waves, which are simply tidal waves coming off the South China Sea. The Kampar flows east toward its wide mouth in the South China Sea. However, when the tide comes in, massive amounts of water flow west up the river. As the river narrows, the waves create tidal bores. They also put the riverbanks under constant flood watch. Notice how the entire beach is visible at the start and how quickly that all changes. Wow, subhanallah. Allah akbar. Ada ada ada. Ah, tu tu tu. Ah, tu Honda Sapo ni kalau sambut tadi.
Think about what the area looked like before compared to what it looks like now. That's the power of tidal waves on the Kampar River. Bono waves can travel upriver at 25 miles per hour. When the conditions are right, they can grow 20 feet tall and last for over an hour. That means you can catch one near the ocean and ride it for several miles, if you can hold your balance that long. But be warned, the Kampar River has its dangers. The water is muddy, making it harder to surf. It's also home to plenty of saltwater crocodiles. Sanming, China is a prefecture-level city in Fujian province. It's home to about 2.5 million people and is known for its gorgeous landscapes and tall mountains. On June 10th, Sanming and the rest of Fujian province found themselves under a yellow alert for rain. That meant a powerful storm was coming and flooding was imminent. They had already experienced heavy rain for the past several days. Between June 6th and 9th, upwards of 13 inches of water fell on parts of Fujian. By the 10th, every street in San Ming was covered in water, mud, stone, and debris. Most watched helplessly as the flood washed their cars away. Others tried to save their vehicles, but there was no beating the raging current. The flooding affected around 75,000 people across the province, and over 21,000 had to evacuate. Ultimately, the storms caused nearly $38 million worth of damage. As far as we can tell, nobody paid the ultimate price. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.